Hey guys, Anthony here. It is Sunday, May 27th, 2018. And we're going to look at a list today, an important list of items that disappear first. And this is uh, in an SHTF situation, an emergency situation, uh, a situation where we find ourselves alone or stranded or having to bug out or having to bug in. Uh, what I'd like to do and what I like to see often is a list of things so I could compare uh, what I already have or add to what I already have or perhaps be reminded of things uh, that I need to get I need to add to a list and so this list it's been around the internet for a long time and uh, it's from a Sarajevo war survivor and this survivor goes on to talk about experiencing the horrible things that can happen uh, during a war and everything associated with that, the heat, the cold, the sniper attacks, the fear, the hunger, uh, the death of close relatives and friends. And so they talk about here stockpiling helps, uh, but you never know how long trouble will last. So locate near renewable food sources. Um, number two, they say living near a well with a manual pump is like being in Eden. Of course, Water being probably the number one item that you would need uh, to survive long term or even short term for that fact. Um, having a, a water pump or a well you could pump out of is, is like being in Eden. Um, talks about They talk about gold can lose its luster after a while, but there's no luxury in war quite like toilet paper. Its surplus value is greater than gold. So... Here they're comparing in a, you know, in a wartime situation, an SHTF situation, how important something that we take for granted as simple as toilet paper. Uh, if you had to go without a utility, one utility, lose electricity, it's the easiest to do without unless you're in a very nice climate with no need for heat. Canned foods are awesome, especially if their contents are tasty without heating. One of the best things to stockpile is canned gravy, they say. It makes a lot of dry, unappetizing things you find to eat in war somewhat edible. Only needs enough heat to warm, not to cook. It's cheap too, especially if you buy in, in bulk. Uh, books they talk about reading. Um, feeling that you're human can fade pretty fast. And so these little items uh, that they would trade for or barter for, um, Things like toothpaste, rouge, which is like a makeup you put on your face, soap or cologne. Not much point in fighting if you have to lose your humanity. These things are morale builders like, like nothing else. Um, slow burning candles, they talk about here, number eight. And matches, matches, matches. So uh, some of the things they list as important are in those eight items. But we're going to go to the top of the list and we'll, we'll work down. And I won't comment on every single one. I'll make some comments as we skip along here because I want to keep this video. Uh, I don't want to make it too long. But I'll put the link to this also in the description box. You can go through. And what I recommend is I had printed this off years ago. And I, I refer back to it a lot to see, oh, well, how am I doing? You know, do I have a generator, you know, number one here? Um, and I think that's important. And with generators goes noise. So a generator can be a double-edged sword attracting too much attention to yourself. That's why I do have one and maybe for a shorter term SHTF, but for a longer term, I would suggest everyone look into some type of solar backup battery in various sizes, you know, like the Goal Zero, like Renogy, um, like the Kodiak, something that's silent that can harness the power from the sun and that can power your devices um, without making a lot of noise and without giving off uh, fumes. Water filters and purifiers. You guys know that I'm on a, a mission this year myself to bump up my water filtration and purification preps. That's always ongoing for me. Uh, portable toilets, another thing. Hygiene is just so very, very important. I learned that from another uh, person that I follow that also went through wars in, in Bosnia and and um, in SHTF school, they talk about how hygiene 
was important. One was one of the most important things. And so portable toilets uh, go right along with that because disease can spread pretty quick. Things like firewood, get it ahead of time, lamp oil, Coleman fuel. Again, these things, uh, if you don't have uh, solar powered devices and you're relying on candles and, and lamps, oil type lamps or kerosene type lamps, you've got to make sure you've got the stuff that go along with it. You know, the wicks and the, and the, the mantles and the oil and stuff like that that goes with it. Guns and ammunition, pepper sprays, knives, clubs, bats, slingshots, those all are super important, guys. Uh, again, hand-run things that don't require electricity that we take for granted, like just a simple hand can opener uh, or a whisker or uh, some type of hand uh, beater for eggs or something. Rice and beans or long-term food storage, the different accoutrements that go with food like vegetable oil and, and things like that. Charcoal and lighter fluid, they, they talk about here as being really uh, important. <clears throat> Things like water containers. What do you have containers to carry water? Whether they're plastic food grade, metal containers, cans, uh, clean garbage pails, stuff like that. Uh, heaters and things like that for uh, wintertime if it's your area gets cold. Again, Going down the list here, if you've got little ones, so baby supplies, uh, things of that nature, washboards, again, mop bucket, ringers, I would say also add to this. And I don't know if it's on the list here. Uh, I buy those uh, in like Lowe's or Home Depot, those pump sprayers in different sizes. Uh, you put some liquid in there, you pump it a few times, and you could spray an area. You could even spray yourself down with fresh water. And, uh, you know, kind of give yourself a shower. But more than that, you can add some bleach or powdered bleach or a solution that you make, a disinfectant solution, and spray around your camp, your your home, your entrances, um, along, along the edges of your house uh, to keep predators at bay, um, you know, uh, mice and rats and, and roaches and things like that that may be trying to creep in in an SHTF. Again, you can never have too many cook stoves of different types, propane and Coleman and, and Coleman fuel and kerosene and, um, and also uh, stoves that work with, you know, with burning uh, wood or um, different types of uh, flammable things like manure and, and or charcoal or something like that. <clears throat> Feminine hygiene uh, products, again, goes along with, uh, hygiene, uh, thermal underwear, of, of course, you know, in a colder climate, saws and hatchets and wedges and things to uh, to cut wood and trim wood and to get firewood going, things we take for granted like aluminum foil, gasoline containers to run for short term at least to run your uh, generator or whatever products that you have that run on gas and stuff. Again, garbage bags, so important. Um Toilet paper, again, Kleenex and paper towels, again, toilet paper so very important to have in this uh, in a situation. Garden seeds, if you're going to be able to grow stuff in a long-term situation, these are a must. I've got to bump up my game with that. Um, again, it talks about uh, canned tuna fish and oil. Um, again, tuna fish and oil or water, it's food, and you need food for long-term survival. Batteries, I tend to um, lean towards uh, rechargeables uh, only because I could reuse them and I have the proper rechargeable devices that can be that can be powered up by my solar uh, batteries, my off-grid batteries, and those batteries can then be replenished by the sun by solar panels. So that's like a never-ending cycle of, of use and reuse that I have in place. So that's something to really take a look at, guys. Um, you can have a lot of batteries, but what, again, once they go dead, then then what what good are they? I would say to stock some regular batteries for bartering purposes, but keep a lot of rechargeables in different sizes, mostly AA and AAA uh, batteries um, that you could use for yourself. Uh, again, it talks about pets or big dogs and plenty of dog food. Again. Matches, it goes on to say here, number 42, 
Strike anywhere preferred. Mat wooden matches will go first. Um, flashlights, light sticks, garbage cans. Again, a clean, clean garbage cans can be used um, to collect rainwater. You can, in an emergency, you could trim your gutter with a hacksaw, uh, put a little diversion piece of plastic tubing or flexible pipe on that gutter and just have it drain into a garbage can when it rains. Fill that garbage can up and use that can, use that collected water for uh, your water storage to put back in your jugs. And uh, if you got a, a um, purification system going, that rainwater will be key in keeping your water reserves going if you're far from a, um, you know, a lake or a stream or something like that. So clean garbage cans, very important. Flashlights, light sticks, again. Can never have too many Dietz lanterns. I have Dietz lanterns, but again, those run on fuel, and you need fuel to run those uh, as backup. Cast iron cookware, super important. Fishing supplies, things to get you food. Duct tape, of course, a million and one uses for duct tape. Um, mosquito coils, repellent sprays. You know, mosquitoes in certain times of the year, guys, and different bugs and ticks are going to be a, a, a problem. So something like a Sawyer uh, product that you spray on your clothes or put on your skin would be priceless And if you had to go out and obtain items in the woods or something. Uh, laundry detergent, candles, uh, can never have too many. Backpacks and duffel bags, again, can never have too many. Things like, you know, sewing supplies and scissors, garden tools of all types. You know, I buy stuff even though I don't live in a rural area and I don't do a lot of gardening or stuff like that. I would still want to have these tools in the event of an SHTF because how important they are. Again, canned goods, fruits and veggies and things that you, you don't really require cooking. The nice thing about cans, you could get them on the cheap when they're sales. One thing cans have, they have a long shelf life. But they also contain water inside of them. You know, canned fruits and vegetables have water that could be drink. You could drink that. Uh, not only can you um, use it to cook the product in, but you could drink the liquid that's in those cans. So think about that when you're storing not only uh, dry rice and beans and things. Dry rice and beans take a lot of water to prepare. Stuff already in cans is ready to go. You don't have to cook it. You could eat it right away. Bleach. Again, sodium hypochlorite. Again, in, in a liquid form or in the powdered pool shock form is definitely something should be on your list. Canning supplies. Again, if you're into that, you can um, you can um, have can, canned items that you do yourself. Knives and, and machetes and axes and things like that and ways to sharpen them. Bicycle might be the only way you get around in a uh, SHTF if you want to conserve the gas in your vehicle or um, you could use a bicycle. So do you have what goes along with that bicycle? You know, tires, tubes, air pumps, things to fix and repair the bike, uh, something to pull with the bike, a little cart. Again, it goes on to talk about here um, rat poison and different uh, roach killers, you know, we don't think about that right now, but again, mouse traps and stuff like that may be really, really important in the event of an SHTF because hygiene's not going to be the best. You might have to be taking trash outside and digging a pit and burning it or, you know, whatever that might attract uh, rodents. And so you need that paper plates and cups, utensils, again, important. If you have a baby, baby wipes, Antibacterial soaps, rain gear, stuff to go out when the weather's not bad. When the weather is bad, I just bought a um, a uh, rain cover for my bug out bag, my Osprey bug out bag, and I'm going to do a video on that today. And even being that today or this weekend has been a rainy weekend here in the Charlotte area, I may take that bag with the rain cover and go out in the rain tonight or today. And see how it works. Test it out. Uh, but rain gear, if you're going out, super important. Number one, it keeps you dry, keeps your gear dry. 
and number two, um, keep you from getting hypothermia. Uh, in the event you get wet, it's no good. Um, shaving supplies and things like that, again, that all goes along with uh, hygiene items. Hand pumps and siphons. I, I always have a couple of siphons on hand for, for water. Take water out of a bigger barrel, put it into a smaller barrel to take fuel out of a can or a vehicle and put it into a can. Again, those things are, are going to disappear in an SHTF. Uh, reading glasses. I, I need reading glasses, so I have a lots of pairs of reading glasses around uh, all over. So again, think of the, these things now. Uh, woolen clothing and mittens and, and scarves and hats and stuff. Um, books and different things to learn. Again, your library is important uh, to have. So, uh, you know, you want to stockpile books on different different things and how-to books. Uh, lumber of all types, wagons and carts. If you guys saw the movie The Road, you saw them pushing the shopping cart. And, um, again, that, that cart held everything they owned as they pushed it along. And, again, all their stuff was in the cart, and it, it wasn't on their back, so it spared them. And they were able to go longer distances because they were pushing something on wheels or pulling a cart. And so that could uh, go a long way in an SHTF, especially if you had to go transport water from, say, a lake or a stream that was a little little distance from your, your house. You wanted a wagon or some type of cart, like an old lady cart that I used to use in Florida. It folds out. You could put a five-gallon barrel in it or jug, take it to where you're going fill it up and pull it back home again indispensable gloves lantern hangers patches glue nails screws nuts bolts things you don't really you may not need in your current living situation but you might want to buy anyway and stockpile things like here coffee and teas and cigarettes wines and liquors numero numero uno for bartering and for not only that just for peace of mind um, there's nothing like uh, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea um, in, a, in a bad situation. It just brings you back down and calms you down. Again, some people smoke, again, for calming reasons, and that's why cigarettes were gonna, are going to be a huge item uh, to, to barter. Even if you don't smoke, which I don't, uh, you want to buy cigarettes and store them uh, for an event that you had to barter or keep someone calm. Wines and liquors, again. Uh, liquors can be used for medicinal purposes, as well as drinking, as well as, you know, again, cleaning a wound, starting a fire. Think about that. Oh, I don't drink, you say? You still want to store different types of, uh, you know, things like vodka, clear clear liquids, uh, liquors like that to help get along in an SHTF. Again, glue and nails, chewing gum, candies, uh, hats, cotton handkerchief. Again, number 100 here, goats and chickens. Again, I don't live on a, a farm, but uh, for you that do, um, and using them as a uh, means of an SHTF, then, of course, you're going to need, um, you'll need ability to take care of those and everything that goes along with it. So that's the list here, guys. This is, uh, I think it's vital to, to go through this and to, uh, Look and see where your weak points are. Now, that's one of the important things I like about something like this, this list. Uh, look, maybe make a list of highlight everything you have and the stuff that's not highlighted, start working on, you know, in small chunks. You know, a little bit each day or each week or each month. Put some stuff together and then check it off your list. And then know where it is, have it ready, know how to use it. Family members also, same thing. Fill them in on what you have, uh, people in your group, and maybe combine things. Or you guys, work, this this family member works on water purification, while another family member, the other family member works on hygiene and, you know, stuff like that. So you can break up these tasks and make them a little less overwhelming. So that's the video today on this Sunday, uh, May 27th, 2018. Uh, again, the 100 items to disappear first. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay ready. We live in a volatile world, a volatile country. 
lots going on now. I'm going to talk more about uh, things going on around the world and in the country that are really, really troubling. And, um, uh, you know, you want to be ready. So stay ready, guys. Take care. Anthony uh, signing off. God bless.